And hello and welcome back again to DAC 2017 CIS qualifiers and look out we got a good one for you Vegas squadron facing off against team empire it's the upper bracket finals for group B I'm lyrical gonna be joined as well by Trent and guess what we got a first round Meepo how you doing man Oh, well, a little bit of a breather there. I was sitting downstairs. I finished off my coffee, polished Five that up, started remaining. heating the house, getting a little, a little loosey goosey down here, nice and Don't warm. I watched some black back. sales. Good show. Thanks, Arteezy. You know, the, the things you get from Arteezy, you know? <laughs> started, started out with Grey's Anatomy, Ooh. the original. That was the OG, guys. I, although I never watched it, I do remember him streaming it way back in the day, but. Black Cell's far, far better. Ten I guess. So, anyway, remaining. you're right. Slide our first pick overall, and then they're like, oh, Radiant hey, guys, that's a Meepo back. and Underlord still left in the pool. We're going to have to snag those up. And then a quick tinker from Vega Squadron. So now still left in the pool despite the Jug and the Bat Rider ban and the Life Sealer ban. We still have Ember Spirit. We still have Lone Druid. We still have back. Sniper. Yeah. Spooky it. stuff. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I haven't actually seen too many of the first round Meepos. I know that he got through in some of the NA regions when, you know, obviously Abed was able to take him and just dominate face. But I'm very Ten curious to see if remaining. it's still something that's just in, you're incapable of dealing with with a good Meepo player. Because we've been hearing rumblings about how strong this hero is. I, where do you rate him right now? Is he just he an unstoppable time. hero if you have a player that can take him, take him in that way? I, I honestly, we don't get to see him enough to get the the best sense of the hero. I feel like because he has just become that first round band for so many teams. And the last times that he wasn't first round band, Empire took him, and yeah. they've won. I think the last three games with Meepo first Radiant overall. Team. So we'll uh, we'll just have to see if Chappie can do it again. He seems to be quite the Meepo god. Uh, they like to do the Meepo Underlord quite a bit as well. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think he capitalizes a lot on all those bounty runes around the map. I see those Meepos just perfectly. Seconds, they they grab like three and then just all poof back right at the two minute, like all those two minute intervals. And I'm just like, wow, that is actually so sick for this hero. <laughs> you like farm your neutral camps around bounty rune timings. And then, well, we all know what the, the way the shared stats now work and the fact that like all heroes lost those stat bonuses, right? From those 10 levels. Yeah. 10 and then Meepo remaining. now has this this stat sharing coming instead of like me and the Agnip stepping now remaining. like all of those Meepos are tankier just from building all these dragon lances so pretty, time. pretty good stuff here so far I, I'm looking forward to Meepo and Pudge and Underlord what a lineup this is like a fan service picks here from Team Empire it is great. This is what you want to see. And I think that they've got a couple of heroes that, like, the Pudge to me feels like a good hero to deal with Radiant the Meepo. So it's almost in some ways like a block pick in, in, in a way. I, I don't know if they would have taken it, but uh, it does also leave open the Lone Druid. So Lone Druid going to be taken by Vega Squadron. Two of the most ridiculous heroes in the patch. We're going to see him face off against each other. What What's the key to dealing with Meepo? How do, how do Vega Squadron shut this hero down? What Five do you need? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone really knows, right? The, uh, you, you think about your pubs, I guess, and you know, the heroes people pick. No one... I don't know. There's just not these answers that you expect there to be. I think Lone Druid's pretty solid. Downsides, he builds into a lot of magic damage with the Mjolnir and Maelstrom. Uh, so Meepo naturally can be pretty good against that, but he has that exceptional range, which uh, Meepo, yes, he can close the gaps, but at the same time, Lone Druid just like picks one Meepo, and if he can just get a bunch of right clicks off, maybe that'll be enough uh, to just get the kill, finish him off. Yeah, I could definitely understand that. I like the Tinker with the blind too, but then you're Dying so worried about this magic damage. I don't think there's really just that one end-all, be-all Meepo solution. I mean, you look at the bands, I guess you could say Sven has always been a, a classic one, so they banned him in the first phase, which maybe could have tipped off Vega potentially, but other than that, I mean, they're banning Batrider, Life Sealer. There's, these aren't heroes that make you go, oh, yeah, obviously, you mm -hmm. don't want, you know, those guys against Meepo. <laughs> Yeah, well, and while well, Meepo is that shining star of a hero that just you got to keep your eye on throughout the entire game, uh, you do also have to contend with everybody else here. And like Underlord, this is a hero that for some teams has just been first band material consistently because of everything that he brings to the table, uh, not to mention Weaver in the pool as well. So uh, they're going to have to find more than just the answer for the Meepo here. And they've got heavy disable in terms of an AoE, which is always great. Uh, some of that single target damage, but... Looking for some support now, I would assume. Is there anything that you feel like Vegas Squadron are really missing in their draft? Or something that you feel like Empire is sort of missing? 
Uh, I do really like the Disruptor Band. That would have been the hero I would have picked for sure to combo up with the Enigma. We talked a lot about this like double bubble sort of an idea between the synergy Radiant of supports yesterday. Pick. And we saw that from Vega Squadron. In both the games they won, it was just this unbelievable synergy between their 3, 4, and 5 role. Uh, I, I really was looking forward to that again here today. And Seam of the Slayer, so good on Disruptor, would have synced up so nicely here. But instead, they'll be snagging up the Ten Rubik next to a very nice management team, Empire. And then we'll also be removing the Silencer. We saw the power Five of that up against remaining. Weaver and Pudge earlier today. Mm. This time he would have been uh, allied up on the same squad, but uh, the same concept Reserve still there. Time. That global cancel of the black hole would have been just like our global cancel of the pudge hooks that we had going on earlier although a little bit more valuable and uh, better synced up in terms of the cooldowns of black hole for sure no definitely and that's that's something that makes you capable of uh just denying out that huge part of his kit and granted you still have enigma who can throw out the demonic conversion and push down lanes heavily but if you're able to as mitigate well as black slow hole, them down too yeah the, totally those range creep ones but yeah, and uh, the Rubik pick as well, very smart by Vegas Squadron. Just not only good for their lineup up against the Weaver, decent against Pudge, you know, hard to get the hook, but when you do, it's great. Uh, but also denying that away from Team Empire would have been a very solid pick for them as well uh, into a support duo up against Enigma. Yeah, well, it was not a Wyvern, which is sort of the classic answer is the Rubik. And now for Team Empire... Uh, with one more pick available for them, maybe Grave, I don't know, it may not necessarily be the best to go for something like a Dazzle. I don't know if they need a whole lot, maybe just a bit more Lockdown. Uh, something like a Lion could be okay, or maybe Avenge to break this to break the Black Hole. Yeah, they've, uh, that, that wouldn't be too bad. The swap, shorter range, I mean, the only long run would be like Bane, which they have used before for King Air, along with the, uh, the Meepo, but they Ten also have Rubik seconds. on the other side, so maybe Bane's not quite that tempting. Lich maybe Lich is a decent doctor. one. Ooh, but there we go. Mr. Doctor. Do you like it? Okay. Uh, it's all right. It's okay against the Lone Druid. You might be able to catch him up with his bear. Doesn't have the best range against Enigma, but perhaps you'll get lucky with the cast bouncing on through and disrupting. Nothing for Rubik to really steal either, so you can just toggle the heal and deny your ultimate. As well as deny your, your cast could be ideal as well. You just always want to be tapping that thing. Oh, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're hopping into game number one. It's Vega Squadron facing off against Empire, and we'll hit the little bumper to load in. Oh, get your get your Pog Champs ready. It's going to be amazing. Here we go. Oh, wow, that was pretty. All right, and we're still here. Um, Trent is It was great, though, I'm sure. Yeah. Have you gotten a chance to Ten look at those yet? The, the no, I haven't. It's things. a five-minute delay, you know? I got to, like, I always forget by the time it's remaining. actually there. Yeah. I'll have to warn Who, you next uh, time. Did, did DAC institute the five minute delay, I assume? Was that a BTS idea, do you know? Or? Um, I think that that was something used by the, the tournament Prepare organizers, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, oh, I kind of like it, to be honest. I, I'm down with the five minute delay. You know, serious tournament, five minutes, that just ensures there's no issue whatsoever. Not that I would ever accuse. Impropriety. Anything. It's not happening. It's, it's uh, yeah it might as well you know like there's no reason to go uh, although it's kind of lame for us and it's really lame on like the stat sites and stuff having to show the answers you know as to who won and whatnot but mm -hmm. uh it's i think it's a better it's better for the integrity of the game we'll just say there's no reason not to do the five minutes absolutely well and now gonna head on out across the map it looks like Ditcha is gonna be playing this one pretty close to the chest Vega squadron versus Empire to me this feels like just such a great showdown between two squads that have been like giants in the CIS region for a really long time is there one team that you feel like sort of has an advantage going into you know both the CIS qualifiers the rest of this one when we eventually see the the Kiev major qualifiers I'm sure we're gonna see more of these teams against each other yeah, um, hmm. on one hand, I think Vega Squadron looked very strong in their their games. They they lost that one to the, the Leshrac and the Terror Blade, which was a little bit of a, a stomp run over kind of a strategy where the, the draft the just did not work begins. out for them at all. They, uh, the, the first game, though, that was a weird one. That was like the Veno and the Invoker and uh, Dark Moon Averted. Right, <laughs> yeah. Managed to take the victory there, but uh, I, I felt Vega Squadron looked strong. But on the other hand, Team Empire also looked good in their two wins, and that was against friends, who are definitely going to be a stronger team than Kamachi. Uh, oh, at least you had, you had what? To them. Sine the courier? Is he going to get nope. the Radiant's courier has been All right. killed? They... Did he just walk it up to try and av avoid something? He he walked it uphill. I guess it was bringing something to Maposhka, maybe. I don't know. That was really weird. 
It was definitely the mid south. I don't know what happened there. All right, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but that was weird. <laughs> no, please do. I have no idea. I think I was finished anyway. But that, I have no idea why I walked up the hill. Or was he? I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. Great pickup he for is, uh, for Vega Squadron. So. Yeah, fantastic. Looks like they're coming in here. Wants to make sure that this pull is not going to come off. You can see this is something that Vega have continuously prioritized, making sure that they're not able to mess with the laning stage and. Something we've seen consistently from the CIS teams. Yeah, Maposka was like the god tier. He was the he did it the best out of anyone we'd seen uh, doing this whole Rubik mid pull. He was disrupting it with an ogre. As uh, well, by the way, we've been having that going on here on the dire side, as you can see. Also possible over here, guys. What a time to be alive! Dota two, possibly even Dota three at this point. Pulling of the ancients, pulling of the side lanes. Please, Ice Frog. Find a fix, my friend. Yeah, it's silly. Very, very silly. Maposhka actually is going to take some damage from here. Doesn't want to rot too much. Sioma is already a little bit ahead of him in turn of damage, and they probably could have found that kill. Uh, G saving on to points for that rocket. Let's see if he can disrupt the stack of the Ancient, though. Then again, it's also a granite golem, so it's not like the, the creeps shouldn't have the easiest time bringing him down. Oh my god, Chappie has dropped really low over here to the side, and without that uh, salve to start off the game and not having a courier, like he'll be able to get level 3, so that does give him another Meepo to play with. Not a great time in lane, though. I'm a Poska here, too, with that Invis rune. Got it again, though. Ugh. He's going to try and get the courier. Ooh. I wonder if they saw Maposhka, perhaps. Yeah, or does he, he has his bottle. Yeah, he's just waiting to crow. Oh, this is good. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, Maposhka, he's just like salivating right now. It's like, oh, oh, where Did is they it? Oh, give they it realize? to me. Oh, he, they might have shown. Did he walk into range right there? Oh, my God, that sucks. That would have been a huge pickup for them. What? Oh, no. Oh, I feel so bad right now. Well, well, all right, GG. That's it. Ruick <laughs> pulls it, getting off. Nice. Didn't get the snipe. And the Ancient is about to spawn. Well, a very, very weird start to this game. You can see that they're actually sticking Pudge in the mid lanes. This is something that probably looks a little bit more familiar to people in the uh, the pub scene. You know, making sure you have a Pudge <laughs> versus Tinker matchup. We'll see if they end yeah. up switching that out. But it's too tough for the Meepo. Yeah, well, they did quite a bit of this as well. Just the, the speed that you can use that Iron Town in the jungle for Chappie, he's just going to get more farm doing this anyway. So it opens up the mid lane for some of his supports to come and take some of this experience in gold there. Um, Maposhka, or rather, uh, Chappie will just get to work. Maposhka, he's going to go do his own Rubik shenanigans here as Pudge. Ugh. This is Zach. Uh, it's so slimy. <laughs> I mean, do what you got to do, for sure. I, uh, I'm not I'm never going to fault the team for doing it. It's going to fault a for not fixing it yet. I believe in you, dude. You got this. Uh, yeah. But uh, all they have to commit is this one ward. And you can just keep doing this from the low ground as Rubik. Yeah, pretty great stuff. And it is going to be a problem for them to deal with. It, we're going to need to see more teams to commit fully to blocking out those Ancients yeah. so you don't get it with the Rubik being picked continuously. So a lot of waves denied away from this Meepo to the tune of about a, what is that, 6 CS advantage. And doesn't look yeah. to be getting a whole lot easier. I will say, you don't, um, well, I guess you guys are wondering, you don't actually need the ward, but you've noticed that he's been by far the most successful Rubik I've ever seen at doing this. And I think just having the ward there really helps because he can be down on the low ground and help manipulate the creeps uh, by like actually being there rather than just going for like the YOLO toss mm -hmm. instead. And that way he can just use the vision from the ward, send the low ground, do the toss that way. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen a Rubik chain so many of them successfully together. So well done by Sioma. Certainly a practiced hand at this. Yeah. And you can see there as well, Chappie, no points up in the net as of yet. He might have been able to possibly catch one onto Snako as he ran through, but uh, wasn't going to be the case, and Snako's just going to head off and away. i, I got to say, though, that you look at the start of this game, and Empire is having an okay time despite all of the trouble mid. Yeah, still getting a decent amount of farm. The, the pulls to the offlane have been working out okay for Ghostic as well. He's level 5. And three quarters, in fact, almost closing into six. And haven't looked at bottom at all, but they've been throwing a little bit of harass on the mag, but not enough to really zone him out. He's still got two tangos left. Now he's being run down a little bit here as that Ben stags himself up an Eidlon hmm. into the top of the net worth, but 
not really much they can also do against FN. He's just kind of good chill here. Tower is under attack. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, we saw the timber saw was able to sit between the towers earlier. The Weaver, a little bit of a variation upon that, but still very capable of, of causing trouble early on. And it well, looks <laughs> like the smoke is going to come. Yeah, Eidolons are like denying each other as the, uh, as the FN tries to snipe, gets another one there, but yeah. And Mag, just like, kill that range creep, oh. please give me six. I'm almost six. I just need six, please. Guys, they're wait. They're going to rotate in. FN, ah, able to back away. They do find the stun on him, and now maybe a lift back. Now he's going to be able to get away. So, yeah. hey, time. Look at this last creep, now just giving the black hole to Mag. Oh, and there also go, taking guys. the bounty rune away. Deny, 10 denies really paying off there for FN. Just saved his life. Or that black hole could have been ready in time to easily get that kill. Thanks. Well, in the meantime, we have basically had Weaver, you know, back out in a way. He's going to have to go back to the bottom lane again. But Mag has had a lot of experience going his way and could start to move around the map to make a rotation. Is there a chance to kill the Meepo here pretty easily? You won't miss it. Uh, I I'm not sure. I guess it's going to depend on to... Uh, Mr. Pudge. Voska's got two points on the hook, so decent range. And he's been haunting around mid so much that Meg may be scared to make that sort of a rotation, but at least getting up towards some easier items. He afford his headdress, he can afford his buckler if he wanted. For now, just make him bank. Can he get this pulled stack? Uh, not quite. One of them gets stuck in there. He's gonna find himself some bonus things later. Well, after the early problems that the Meepo was having, he's definitely caught back up and gone well ahead of the. Well, not ahead of the Tinker, but at least on parity with him as King R is going to take a couple shots to the head. Snako shows up as well, very deep behind the tower. And, oh, nice lift away. Sioma realized what was happening. They're not going to be able to find him. And the TPs that are going to come in as well, that will be First Blood drawn by Mag. Almost had him. Yeah, bring him to draw down. Maybe apply some pressure onto this bottom lane. Oh, Aposhka has eyes on G here. And... Doesn't look like they want to try and go for any pressure. Meepo, he just wants to farm. Keep it going. And immediately FN just heads top. So he'll apply his own pressure up here. But this is the enigma you're looking at. This is the group up pressure. Lone Druid, we all know what he does these days. This ridiculous amount. Long range sniping action. But he still has a lot of those old elements inside him as well. So if you leave him alone on the lane for too long, your tower can certainly fall quite quickly. With the help of Eidolons, it gets even easier. This is something that they're going to need to contend with at a certain point. And the pressure is not really coming out from the other side. Like, Empire can't pressure the other ones at all, so... Yeah, easy tower. I mean, this Weaver does nothing. <laughs> He's a, it's in struggle city right now. Uh, I, do you think that we see Vega come back and try and defend us with Black Hole? Uh, what do we have in terms of rotations? Oh. It seems that's the plan. Now they catch on the two of them. Did Shara there? They poof back in the bear as well, and they are going to chase him down, but. Well, everybody out and away for Empire. And well, good choice there. So, not going to offer anything free. Now they just want to take that same pressure, apply into the top lane. Dyer's middle and mind you, this massive rotation attack. with the Radiant will dissuade them from doing so. And Mag actually just still camping bottom. I like this. He didn't go up with that full rotation. He stayed because he's just like, well, Radiant's until there's actually pressure here, I should keep up my own attack. efforts. And even deny a little bit of fire away from Chappie, who, and not too surprising, Dyer's ahead on in terms of last hits. Attack. Not quite on the net worth. Thanks to some tower gold as well as general lane creep, something out Lone Druid. Oh, Maposhka looking for the hook. Oh, Eidolon in the way. Good, good little micro there in the straight line. Maposhka. Um, just be a little bit careful. There's a lot of damage. Oh, the Malapis. Oh, no. Maposhka. This is not how it's supposed to go. The right click's coming in. And Shappy, he throws the nets. It's caught on to several of them. And that should be enough to let Pudge out. Man. Boo. Man, come on, man. I know you wanted to drop that. <sighs> All right. He's, he's holding the black hole. He's got bigger fish to fry. He says, I, I'm not wasting this on Pudge. I don't think Oh, Seneco top lane. They're on top of him. And no way out. Coconuts bouncing. And... Well, Slard are fallen. There we go. One to one. It's shocking there's only been two kills this game, honestly. Quite a few rotations around the map. So much action around these neutral camps. So many pulls. More, more dead ancients than heroes so far. Mm. 
Not a, not a stat you normally see. I will say to me at least, I feel this sort of impending sense of doom for Vega Squadron with the Meepo oh, yeah? starting to come online. Is that something that you really need to be concerned about or are Vega have, well, gonna have the tools to deal with it? He is in the Roche pit, so I, I'm inclined to agree with you. <laughs> Oh my god, did they realize this though? There's a smoke that's moving in. FN is also going to be spotted heading over this direction. So they're starting to walk over this direction. Sioma, do they realize it? Black hole from the outside, maybe. They throw out the Malefice and the damage is going to start to come. They get the Aegis onto Chappie. And now the Witch Doctor ulti onto Mag as well. He's taking so much damage. They get the Black Hole, but it's nothing. They are going to be able to bring down the Meepo, but Vega Squadron, having already lost three heroes, they do not want to take this fight. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yo, King Air, though. What a player. Well done, that cask. Just making, like, that was really close. He almost had that black hole from the outside. Possibility that someone's going to snuff their way in there and snuff with that Aegis. Oh. And now a hook, too. Got him. Did you, Rob? Pull back in. Chappy finds the nets and gets the kill. FN finishes it. Meanwhile, the time lapse back gives him a little bit more HP. And, well, this should be the tower going down. At least Yoma did uh, get six from all that fighting. Now it doesn't scoot you, but I guess that'll be enough to hold. Yeah. That that was a really nice setup there too with the uh, the pit of malice. Reminds me of all these pudges I keep seeing buying rod and pubs. Just like it's like t-ball. They just they just reach you with the the rod of Atos from so far away and hook you. It's like cheating. So this time he's got Ghostic to help him out with that. Yeah, very frustrating to play against. And I guess the flip side of this is that you do have a Tinker who is going to be at least somewhat farmed and has some of the levels to be able to hold on to the towers. Um, but I might end up changing soon as well. FN, he's found Seneco. They have the long range net if they want to use it. I always am surprised by, well, do they not? Can't kill him. Thought that they might've been able to get him. Yeah, I thought so too, but there you go. Seneco, a little bit riskier in terms of where he's farming, but you gotta do that sometimes as position four slider. I get up towards that plank dagger and well on his way. Game going for this magic wand first, help out in all these fights. Oh, <laughs> found uh, Sioma. Over to the side, lift up by Rubik, and Sioma oh, is going to die. Oh, uh, that hurts. And now they caught Seneco as well. Oh, he might be in trouble. G, are they going to have eyes on him as well? Lone Druid trying to run away. They dropped the Witch Shock Dolty. Doesn't do any damage, so. Vega just trying to escape. FN going to time lapse out. Net somehow catches on to Ditchia. But Chappie's going to get out of there as well. Well, they've drawn everyone to the mid lane. They killed the Rubik. Still up 6-2. to two. And now Tinker and Lone Druid just going to try and spread this map. Bad news for Vega, though. This is taking away a little bit of that five-man Dota. They only got a single tower in that early span of the game. Unable to get any group up effort. They let the Roche slip through their fingers. Although they did deny the Aegis by uh, taking Chappie down pretty quick. The gold still heading over to that Radiant side, still buffing them all up. And now they're just kind of struggling to find this moment where they just want... Uh, they have the Maelstrom, I guess, now up on Ditcher, which is good, but now he just wants to get in that Dragon Lance. And then you have this the Tinker that needs to get into his Blink Dagger. He's far enough, but far away. And about the same distance here for Seneco, who also needs his Blink Dagger. And until that like trio of items are up, they can't really fight. So that leaves Mag to just fire him in the jungle. He has a mech that's not doing anything, because he's not with his team. He's not pushing lanes. And he's just like dead weight right now, waiting to maybe smoke with a black hole and, and try and get some team gold going that way. All right, well, we'll see if they're going to be able to do it. It's going to become increasingly difficult as Meepo almost has his Blink Dagger done, level 14, almost 15, which is going to give him that next talent. I imagine it's Life Seal for Meepo. I haven't seen a lot of the talent tree usage by them yet because there just haven't been a ton of games. Uh, but Meepo's talents seem just so good for him. Yeah, I mean, he picks it up right there. It's, it's one of those ones where uh, Life Seal not often so early on in the chart, but levels. Always nice when you've got the higher levels than the minute. Oh. So you know you're having a good Meepo game. Yeah. Quite strong indeed. Well, we'll see if Vega Squadron have the tools to deal with it. They actually caught G with the Pit of Malice, but no follow-up. King R, not there. Just a little hey, Pushka how you doing? has reached 6 too, though. So now if he actually is there for those Pit setups, they have the full dismember to add all as well. Oh, man! <laughs> oh, my God. G. Radiant's middle tower Ooh, <laughs> Lucky stars on that one. Well, here's our big smoke. We have the black hole. We're ready to try and get something going for this team. And Maposhka, 
Uh, he'd be an okay start. Oh, they're gonna keep him behind him though. This is nice. This is where the, the big prize is there in the back. Juicy target, King R. Well, able to dodge away from it for the moment. They immediately go for the Dark Rift. Everybody grouping up to try and get out of there, but they are going to lose that Witch Doctor. So, well, one ends up going down. That's it. All right. Well, they got one kill. Don't have to use the black hole. And now they're all grouped up. They had to Meepo lead. Maybe they can try and apply some pressure to that top lane and at least draw some sort of a defense and give some space to Tinker G on the high ground. Mabushka knows, though. Oh, they got him. Caught out and going to be brought down. A huge kill at this point. Yeah, Mabushka. great grab this ward. Helping spot out exactly where he was going to be. That was the freshly purchased Blink Dagger done for Tinker. Hoping he was going to be able to stay alive, but no such luck. Yeah, at the very least, he did grab that before going down. Uh, it's you know on this life rather than having to get a death cost out of that one. So tower is under attack. we'll see if he can be a little bit slipperier with it next time. Ooh, Haster and Chappie. He's running pretty deep in there and does not want to step into all four of those heroes. So we'll back out. I'm a post guy camping the shrine here as they pressure in with FN. I think that uh, maybe just Dyer's an Enigma might wander down here to try and push attack. out. There's a lot of pings going on. It wants to secure this ward that King R is going to place down. Actually, kind of a neat one. Uh, might end up getting dewarded just by virtue of a sentry Dyer's placed up on these hills, but there's a chance it doesn't. They're actually going to come in now. Tinker shows up, as does Mag. Needs to be careful. It's going to look for FN. Not going to be able to find it, though, as the coconut bounce. King R is going to be the one that ends up going down here, as well as Maposhka. So they get a double. Great aggressive posture, good idea, but if you don't get that hook just right away, like instantaneously to start getting a kill there with a Witch Doctor ulti, total disaster. And it's <laughs> precisely what we just saw. Great follow up there from Soneko. Double kill helping their team into their own coffers. Soneko so close to that blink dagger, just a little bit further. Really does not want to go down right now. Yeah. And with this lineup that you have from Empire, the kills come so rapidly that oh, yeah. you can just end up getting exploded when you're farming in a place you think that is safe. Uh, also, mechanism done for Underlord now is it looks like Meepo is about halfway to that Aghanim Scepter. He is farming up quite a storm. Yeah, they, uh... I guess maybe one issue with Meepo it tends to suck away quite a bit from the team. Not too bad for Ghost Egg so far. Once he has the Dark Rift back on cooldown, he's just right back up here. He just kind of feels invincible. But other than that, you know, it can be hard to find some neutral camps. It's like playing with a Nog on your team, the same idea. Yeah, you put up a lot of faith and stock into the guy. And, well, it certainly pays off. Radiance oh, even an illusion room for him here, too. Oh, yeah, that's kind of weird it, that they but... didn't leave that one. But. Give it over to the I Weaver and FN had a bottle, so. Yeah. Now, there is G here, and he's going to be able to pressure out Ghost Stick. Probably a finished off pipe wouldn't be a bad idea, and it does look like Underlord's going to try and finish the Guardian Greaves first. But that will be a very high volume or value item for Ghost Stick eventually as they force out the Glyph. Yeah, it's a really nice Lotus Sword game, too. We'll probably see that come up from him, I would guess. After after that Piper, oh. maybe he might be valuable there. there. Dark Rift again used for Ghost Stick, and it's like he is going to get out. So the rest of the team escapes, and <laughs> Ghost Stick didn't even end up. <laughs> Not down. even a panic, really. Oh, he stole Dark Rift, though. All right, guys, this is the place. Yo, he's taking the bottom. Ooh. They're actually going in. Chappie has no idea. Oh, God, you never expected the Dark Rift from Rubik. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, all right. <laughs> that Round was pretty applause. sick. Let's go. Sioma. I have never seen that. <laughs> that is the first since Underlord has been introduced. That is such a huge kill right there. A thousand gold and everybody gets in on it. Radiance bottom tower uh, yeah, is under attack. I don't blame Chappie at all for that. Like, his Meepos are just down bottom. You're so not thinking about that happening. And that goes Meepo kill immediate tier two. All right. The other thing is that that was for Underlord. What was that? Five seconds where he could have cast another spell to not get a stolen. Anyways. We'll leave it alone for the moment. King R is going to be left over to the side here. He's going to TP out Seneko. Oh! Ah, didn't spot him in time. Oh, that was sick. It was he really was good. still taunting, dude. I just looked over, and he's still spinning in circles. <laughs> he feels good, definitely. <laughs> and that's, that's a spell that's going to really be impactful for the next couple of minutes. Like, Chappie can't farm lanes anymore safely. 
We'll get uh, at least one more use out of it. Hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> They'll even have the black hole for the next one. Yeah. A dark rift into black hole, the dream. Yeah, more, more likely that they'll uh, not get caught out by it, I suppose, though. But... No. That's pretty sick. So we'll smoke up 23 more seconds till dark rift back up cool down here for our Rubik 8 for Ghost Second. They're all pretty grouped up here. Oh, Maposhka. And there is a blink for Meg. Crush, Maposhka is going to be caught there, gets oh. the mechanism, trying to heal up. He is going to be able to get the hook off, but. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage to find that kill. They drop the Witch Doctor ulti as Snakeo is going to get a miss up hill, but he dies over to the side to FN. Wasn't the Ancients. G also brought down by Chappie right on top of a Mag in oh, trouble. Mag. Ender control and, well, FN more than to, enough to finish him off. tried to game that fight too much. Bam! Right when it started, he, he had this one opportunity, but it was difficult with the vision. Like, I think he saw three, but he wasn't sure who else was there. And then he links himself into the roaster, where he's just waiting. Like, maybe I can capitalize either just by straight up walking out and black holing, or I can wait for the full uh, rotation of my blink dagger and jump right back out and, and find that moment. But then just FN, he was dancing around the outside of the pit for so long. Finally, he just sneaks in. It's like, oh, hey, guys, there's a, an enigma in here. Now uh, it's occupied by a different guy, the owner himself, the landlord Roche, back up in action chat and spotting him. In oh, there. another dark rift down to the bottom. It's Chappie is in a little bit of trouble. Are they going to be able to bring him down? They do. Sioma, that second take of it, he's going to steal Earthbind afterwards, but making good use of that steal. Yeah, it's just expiring too, so perfect timing. And that means no Roche instantaneously for the radiant side. Great grab. Again, uh, uh, you know, understandable that Chappie gets caught up by it for sure. Not understanding it, and uh, or not uh, expecting it too much, or difficult to play around. As you have so many units across the map, it's hard to keep track. So mm. very well done once again here, and uh, again, no black hole required. So we do still have that here for the Roche fight. And now they're going to end up moving up here. They pull back in Sineko, a nice grab. King R also going to drop the ulti, but God, the damage from G is just too significant. And they throw out the Earthbind, doesn't cancel that channel. But they will be able to kill off Sineko nonetheless. So two down, Anis hurts. Still can't cap was on the Roche though. So I'm feeling they're strong enough. Probably feeling the tier one's also more important in this case. More likely to succeed. Oh, Mag finding Ghost Stick. They have the Pit of Malice down. FN is there as well. He's dropping real low. The damage is significant and they have the damage turned back onto FN as well though. Can they bring him down? Time lapse? No, he's gonna get away. Now the Firestorm down, Sioma the Slayer is going to die as well. They've taken down four, they've taken down five. Empire, the easiest team wipe of their life. Oh my god. Alright, perhaps a little bit ahead of themselves there from Vega Squadron. Definitely wanting to push the tempo, I can get that. Meg jumping forward, trying to apply that pressure. I mean, so many heroes were dead. You know, you're just like, okay, maybe I can get one more and we just keep them off kilter. Just like one kill after another kill. They never fully assemble as five again. We know that we're down. We know that they have the pressure right now. And we need to make some action happen, but a little bit too far, too fast. Roche, done. Mid tower, about oh. to be done. And Plenty of time until anyone useful is back up. And they've got Meepo Ags online. They've got the Aegis, five of them hitting at this tower, and there's just no answer. Like the level 20, so he has the 25 attack speed on top of it, and they're just going to Dark Rift out and away. And, well, it doesn't matter. You get a 12 hero crush right there on all the damn Meepos. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah, that's depressing, isn't it? That'll really help your stats, though. Oh, yeah. An average hero for crush. Shots to Ruben ever Suneko. Fantasy points. Yeah, there you go. This is where the cash starts rolling in for the Radiant side. So nice when you're support. I love having Meepo when he finally gets the buildings down. You know, he's absorbing all these neutral camps, maybe hurting the squad a bit, but once he takes a set of racks, then you start rolling in it. We got that pipe. We got ourselves Guardian Griefs. Actually, it's going to be a full out sight queued up for Ghost Six so far. Maybe feeling they're strong enough, don't need that Lotus for uh, dispelling the Amplifier or anything like that. or. Oh, Ooh. Oh, Chappy looking. They got the earth finds. Yeah, and there's the turnaround though, but they already have the casket still there. Rubik, guess what? Oh, He's got Sioma Dark Rift dead. again. Sioma never going to end up <laughs> not having Dark Rift. Alright. Apparently, uh, Rubik is pretty good against Underlord. <laughs> That's what I've learned. That, that is great. Oh, 
Although they're still gonna get towered. So, you oh, know, it Mac? is a little crap. Uh, oh, he was with the black hole in time. They're able to hook him back in. Snakeo gonna be controlled. Earthbind down. He is gone. And in spite of all of the plays that Vega are throwing out, they just do not have enough to deal with this Meepo. First pick Meepo, guys. Chat to Dota. He has played it very well. Oh, quite. And I mean, they've got all of the March of the Machines to try and make them run out. Chappie, Aegis going to expire shortly. We'll see if he does end up getting chased down, but looks like they're just back out for the moment. Oh, wow. Actually, I thought it had been longer than that. It still is like two and a half minutes left. That's Ugh. depressing. <laughs> dire. I, I would have thought it was way longer. I feel like so much happened since he took that Roche, but they just took that first set of racks so fast that yeah. they pressure the bottom, they're immediately up top. Maybe this is their moment though. Mag, still not a great black hole used. They have and Firestorm. Jump forward, trying to find an FN. Pops his BKB, is going to still be under attack here, and it does look like they're going to be able to turn it back around. He gets the time lapse off, and that's just going to be FN killing them all off. Two already down and maybe soon to be more. He has another Sakuchi chasing for Sioma. The second hit from the Geminate attack gets the kill on the Rubik. And well, in the meantime, bottom lane, this is a dead third tower. My goodness. Oh, hand. Yeah, Chappie getting a lot of love, but FN playing very, very well this game. I love his item choice. DKB so smart. And he just does go down. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming in from G. You gotta be careful if you're Meepo here. How? Oh no, he oh, already yeah, sent the, the first one, one back. Way up on the high ground, playing that save with the Aegis. Yeah. What he knew it was gonna expire too. Yeah. Let's make the most out of it. There's our site finished up for Ghostic. And uh, but yeah, back to FN though. Like, just Maelstrom, Diffusal, Dragon Lance. It's a little bit of a mix-up build, but then just the BKB. Such a smart choice. Like, it doesn't matter if you get rooted, and it doesn't matter if you get black hole. They just don't really have the damage to actually get through that BKB. And this means you don't have to worry about uh, the uh, the eventual Agnum Sephir that's going to be coming out from this Tinker. No concern there. The blind and whatnot. Yeah. Well, and now the Shrine's starting to go down. Next Roshan, whenever that does happen to come up, will be even harder for them to contest. But you just look all around the map, and Meepo is farming everything. It's interesting to me that still the Weaver is ahead of him in terms of net worth. FN 10, 0, and 9. Like you were saying, just a hell of a game for him. Game 1 looking pretty damn solid for Empire. I guess we'll have to see how they do without the Meepo under the... Uh what I'm going to call a safe assumption it's going to be banned out in the first phase next game. No. Just, yeah. you, just, you give this guy first. You have the entire draft to try and deal with him. Nothing. Ah. Ellen, there they go, hitting away onto the tower. You have a sheep stick on Chappie as well, so if they happen to catch sight of G, it's going to be a pretty quick and easy death. But bottom lane, Sineko doing his best. Going to try and push this lave out and keep him back to the best of his abilities. I just guess still only one melee Rax. Kind of surprised they weren't able to get uh, anything else off this. Then again, they are closing out shrines, of Radiant's course, and maybe just playing a little bit patient. Yeah. Meepo, he, he also is about to have level 25 uh, and, you know, just about three quarters of a level so getting that 400 health i'm assuming that's what you do the three second poof cooldown sounds good in theory i but know that that poof seems pretty damn sick really minus three seconds like half the cooldown i know but like you want to right click fools at the end right i don't know <laughs> maybe that's just right, isn't it more about the style like come on let's be real dagger. i'm not a meepo player so i'll just take your I, word I, for it <laughs> i'm just gonna guess that whatever chappy does is the right thing this guy knows more about meepo than than all of us yeah true enough so, the smoke up play, the movement up towards the top, and this could be the final nail in the coffin of what has been a rough, rough game for Vega Squadron. Empire looking quite strong. Obviously with the Meepo, I mean, it just it gives you so much more options in your draft, ways to cause trouble for your opponents, and they don't have that extra ban. Stalking mid. Will it just oh, be God. a lone druid bear that pays the price? Uh, man himself? No, no, it's not the hook. And oh, that cask though. Yeah. All right. I don't want to go for it. 
They're playing it very safe. Still a ways away for Roshan. It looks like it's actually a decent timing on it. And we have our Aghanims. Okay, so we actually got the GX before they took a second set of racks. I can't believe it. I thought there was zero chance this would happen. He had like 300 gold when they took that melee racks. Tinker, uh, that, that, I mean, if nothing else, at least you can maybe focus down and kill off the other heroes in the game. Like, that, that's a possibility. Um, Meepo with the extra little magic resistance is going to be nice for him, but also he's just really, really tanky. Uh, he did end up going for the 400 health, so 2,600 2, HP on each of these Meepos. All right, Chappy God has spoken, guys. Clearly anything you ever do is wrong. There's no such thing as situational choices. Mm. This is it forever. <laughs> Absolutely. I like it. Beefy, tanky. Swaps those treads over to strength and he's just like, deal with me. Just wants to see what his uh, maximum HP can't be here. So that's moving towards that Scotty. God. Clearly not enough Dragon Lance's first off though, I mean. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, really. Hey, he doesn't have one. What the heck? Where, where are so we at? Sad. Yeah, I don't know. Clearly, I don't think he knows how to play this hero. Yeah, it's up to 3,000. He's missing now. like five Dragon Lances right now. God. Well, hey, we finally got our Lotus Orb. So, I guess here's my question for you. We have seen the first pick Meepo win most of the games that's come about, or at least the, the ones that I've watched. Uh, does this just mean that first pick Meepo is always going to be the option if you have a player that can take it? Uh, not necessarily. I think it kind of depends as to. You know who your opponent is. Maybe they play certain heroes very well against the Meepo. Maybe they, you've seen them be successful against Meepo before. Uh, maybe there's certain heroes left in the draft too that can be really aggressive early and try and disrupt some of that jungling that he was able to do relatively easily. But uh, until they lose the game, I'd probably just keep picking Meepo if I was Empire. Mm. Does look like also the Underlord did go back for that Lotus Orb like you were talking about. Obviously can be really effective and helpful in the midst of these fights. They're going to pull in an illusion, kill off Slardar, and, well, it may be time to go secure themselves a Roshan. Last vestiges of hope for Vega Squadron now. Yeah, they're setting up for it, too. Empire well aware they're planning something. Courier? Oh, Has they find... All right, they're on to Ghost Stick. It's a pretty tanky hero to go on right at the start of this one. Lotus oh, Orb as well. Gee. They turn it back around. He's going to get the Dark Rift off the Black Hole onto five. Oh, the Meepo's there as well as FN. They just don't have the damage, though. Tinker already gone. That would have been the play. That could have been the play. But in the end, woulda, coulda, shoulda, not going to be enough. And God damn, they do a lot. I mean, they did kill off the Meepo. And it looks like they're going to be able to pull back in Dichira. Yeah. FN's still too big. Yeah, like, Sioma is going to get ran down here. They can go right into Roche if they want after this. Empire, too much. Yeah, we're at the point of the game where Nipo has given back quite a bit to the team. Just everyone else was able to farm up. He was pushing up these waves and just giving them such an advantage that, like, Ghost take up plenty of time on the lanes. He's rich. Uh, he's almost up to the lone druid, the only person on the die who's up above him. So a very nice tri coming out here from Team Empire. And again, FN just... Surprisingly, so far ahead of even the Meepo. It's cool here. And now an Aegis. Oh, it's some cheese. That's nice. Go get the cheese, guys. Looks like they'll get it. And I'm, I'm feeling right now like this is just... I mean, how do you even really stop this pressure that's going to come here? Lone Druid's going to be back up, but he doesn't really have the same levels of damage that you would need out of him in these fights. It feels like it just has to be the perfect initiation every time or they lose. Dyer's middle barracks are under yeah, attack. another black hole would be key, but 90 more seconds to oh. have a gem to try and control FM, but again, they, they do have to kill him twice. Oh, God, Snake almost ends up going down there. Weaver getting close to his 25 as well, and we've seen how good that less. is. He jumped out of there. I'd rather have Chikuchi if I was Yoma. Yeah. I mean, if he had an Ags, it'd be a different story, but right now he's struggling for... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just the, the bracer at the moment. But still Chappy Farms and able to keep these lanes pushed out continuously. So Weaver, the real damage dealer in these fights, I would say, even though Meepo is just a monster. And it looks like they're trying to set up on him on the bottom here. Yeah, but up top, everyone else is there. 
and FN can just hit away. Can still be set up. Uh, Chappie's going to back out, so they're not going to be able to find him. And in the meantime, FN, with the age, just everything in hand, is hitting Eight away. Second BKB, Lotus Orb backing him up. Every time he gets blinded, they can just dispel it and go stick. Well, I guess only once every 15 seconds. I shouldn't say every time. Still have that working for them. Well, and if they do manage to throw out a laser onto FN when he's got that echo shell on him, suddenly you're going to end up in a really rough situation because you're shooting <laughs> it back at your whole team. The, the prism effect. Well, they don't want to pressure it. They don't want to test their luck. Waiting for Vega to overstep their bounds. Is this something to be concerned about at all? Like, if Vega Squadron can make this game last another 30 minutes, like, do they end up winning in the late game then? Uh, chances definitely get better when there is one of the cores being a uh, Underlord. Then again, on the other side, we have like this core Enigma, but he'll kind of fall to the wayside, maybe give a little bit more space to Seneco if he can get up to a secondary item other than Helm. Uh, a four staff or something, and uh, then again, even their damage will start to fall off. I'd rather have Lone Druid Tinker than Weaver and uh, Meepo, I suppose, though, although they're relatively similar. I don't know, this game's pretty... I'm surprised to say that they're not just going high ground. Like, yeah. Mag, you knew he didn't have Black Hole still for a little while, but they have missed that window. And uh, G certainly doing a good job split pushing these waves, but they have quite a bit of split push themselves on the Dire. Some sneaky plays from Sineko to try and keep that up here, too, so grab a wave down. Oh, actually, no, he just did this. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see also FN with that level 25 talent just moves so rapidly under Sakuchi. They're going to pressure this out, see if they can at least apply a bit more damage onto these towers or keep the lanes pressured. But Chappie's been hanging out top, waiting for a rotation in from the Tinker. It feels like G realizes something is up, though. Yeah. All the Meepo's nothing farm. Gonna, nothing gonna come of it, it seems. Thought maybe he'd go for it. A bit of an awkward one. With no boots to travel also, it's gonna be hard for Meepo to catch up with the rest of his team. Um, at least if the fight breaks out down here bottom. Could be an opportunity. I, do you solo Black Hole FN if you're able to get him? Uh, not until the Aegis is gone. Okay. If they can kill him once, then I would be definitely A-OK -okay with black holing the Aegis respawn. Alright. Now, no Lincoln Sphere is something to keep in mind. They have the amp damage there on top of him. Root up first time. There's the time lapse away, though. And, well, with the stun coming in from that Centaur Conqueror, it's a dead bear. Oh. Alright, yeah, that's the, the laser back onto G as well. Chappie still has one Meepo up there, just waiting, but the main Meepo, here, I don't know, maybe waiting for the next wave. Or oh, oh, hook, they found right Seneco in. right oh, in between they're jumping it. Bottom and they're on top, top of it. Yeah, this should end up being a kill. They actually dropped the black hole, though, and able to catch on all of Chappie. G is going to do the damage here. Is it going to be enough? They need the lifesteal. They do bring him down. So Meepo ends up falling. Big plays, and, well, they've only lost one of these barracks, and they are going to be able to get out and away. Oh, that's frustrating, though, but, like, you have no choice. This will eventually just win the game for Empire. They just have the Underlord on one side with plenty of damage on the Weaver, and then they just jump top with the, the Meepo. You have to Black Hole one of them, and Black Hole is their big tool to win these fights. So if it gets split one side or the other, you have guaranteed damage and building taking on the other. And that was with the Fortify as well. Next time, not going to be nearly as uh, easy to defend for the Dire. Yeah. Very, very nice play. I, I really like that. And then they just hand the cheese over to FN, too. Well, and this is sort of what we were talking about in the draft as well, that this is a lineup that you, you focus so much of your attention onto that Meepo, and then you have to deal with the other heroes also. And FN has just done such a fabulous job this game of getting what he needs. 13-0-11 <laughs> on this guy. He's been involved in all of their kills but one on a Weaver. Yeah, yeah. He uh, even sold his treads, too. Uh, well, I mean, with the Shikuchi moves, it's understandable. Like, it's one thing to go boots and sweep in the whole game. Oh, oh, nice time lapse, but uh, once you have that talent, then that's like definitely no boots. Who cares? So, he'll build into a Bloodthorn to replace this cheese once it's utilized. He's going to go back in again, and I'll see who he ends up going on to. Found Sioma. They do have Mag here. There is no more uh, oh, Aegis. Oh, oh, he will get it off. He ate the cheese, FN! 
Oh, it should have been the play, but they didn't have Black Hole at that point, and still everybody's starting to drop. Ditchia Rock going to fall as well. FN too strong. And King R, Ghost cheese. Scepter's away. I can't believe that. Got the cheese off, and well, a double kill for him. Chappie's showing up now as well. Enigma's the only one left, and this, this is pretty much it. So close. Dyer's top barracks are under Damn. attack. You got that at 68 health. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> just popped the cheese. Wow. Oh. Unbelievable. What a game so far. I mean, you got the Rubik plays earlier. I'm going to have to watch that one back. But uh, these last second cheeses as well. And now Mag looking for the opening. No black hole for another 40 seconds. And does not enough for a fresher. Chappie has actually taken a ton of damage and ends up just dying. A rare misplay in this series. Ghost is out. Down with this. Where's my meat book? But it's only a ranged rack that stands. Oh, no get FN. And uh, FN not looking Well, maybe, though. Actually, they got him. They've been able to lift him up. Snake with the follow-up crush. This is actually going to be two of the cores down. Only one has buyback. That'd be a long I see shot. a line down mid by Seneco. <laughs> yeah. A very hopeful line. Oh, the troll creep. They have to just oh grab with God. their own helm. 40, 45 <laughs> HP. All right, yeah, they got to... Mm. I mean, can they do this? Is this... No. No, okay. <laughs> they have buyback. Still the beaver. Um, do not abandon all hope until the throne has fallen. Yeah. And we've certainly seen that used a couple times today. Or one game, things were all but said and done for about five minutes or so, and they kept on battling. And uh, Vega not going to lie down quite yet. Take down this tower. They have the lone druid. They have quite a bit of damage. They are fortunate. There's 30 more seconds of no Meepo. He does have bots too, though, so a single have... slippery play of any hero could get someone back up there. They have a black hole, and they will have Refresher, possibly. Uh, Enigma didn't sell his stuff, so they won't have a second black hole yet. But he they could have it on the Rego. They need a uh, secret agent helm cream. Okay, nice hook out. But King R, ooh, oh, man. That was a nice save. Drop really low. This is a, well, tier three gonna drop in just a second. They still have the backup and top lane uh, pressured back, in. back and there's creep in their base though. So there's no back door right now. If Meepo can get to that base, that Rax is dead. All right. They're, they're really fortunate there's not a helm creep coming up here right now from the Radiant side, or that should just be dead. Hmm. Anyone could have bossed onto it. And they're gonna hold it for the moment. Uh, this is going to be the refresher done for Mag, though, so there's a chance that he can possibly get off a big one. And, you know, it's 20,000 net worth, was 30,000 for a point. Uh, almost a, well, 40,000-ish experience lead. So it's a it's a hole to climb out of. If there's a hero to do it, though, it'd be Enigma. Long Roche respawn timer. Here's the smoke, which was not spotted in base. Everybody grouped up here. It looks like Chappie is going to be the one to break it in Seneco. Dude, Secret ah. Agent Creep is getting ready. He's oh. actually going. Oh, God, they got it. Yeah, he's going to be going in there. <laughs> oh, very, But they do very find Maposhka. Well, here by King Ar Are Maposhka's they go gone. It? All right, yeah, they go in. They're going to be able to take it down and time lapse away as well. Nicely played there. So they're going to be able to get out. FN trying to rotate in now and see if he can make something happen. The cask's still bouncing. They've got to make it happen with this creep wave here, which unfortunately is dying over on the top side. So, going to be quite difficult, but maybe with Pudge down. That's nah, still tough. Yeah, again, with the Tinker, though, it seems they're not going to give up to Mega Creeps. Mega looking to hold on. The net worth has started to at least dwindle down. Not too surprising when they lose a couple quick kills there. Diving for buildings. Where are the objectives in my eyes for Team Empire? And the Ditchera, he's got it queued up, guys. We might just get it. The one last shot. The it's hope. It's the, the only rapier. thing you can do. And again, you know, this is this is a couple of heroes here that while they are elusive, if you manage to find one of those black holes down on a weaver. He is not going to be able to survive the right clicks from a rapier lone druid. And he hasn't built into evasion either. Yeah, and Siamo's been doing a nice job of holding on to Firestorm and stealing it too. Likely in the hopes of helping to burn down that Meepo as the percent based. Very handy against the extremely tanky heroes in the game. 
It would take a miracle, that is for sure. And it looks like Roshan is going to be the way they go with this. Probably a better luck with a miracle. Okay, he's very good at ratting, you know, he's got his Nagas and his Tinker play. Like, Miracle, he's great at Voker player, but Miracle. Oh, yeah. That guy, he's got the real rat stuff, so. I'm bad guy, I might be calling up the SEA telephone line there. True enough. All right. I don't think he's going to show up, though. I don't I don't think we have the technology. There it is, everybody. Dichiara picked it up and now getting ready for their fight. Maposhka pulls in Sioma. They're setting up for what could be a big back hole. They lay it down onto two FN controlled. He is going to die in this one. So down for 90 seconds. He oh, buys okay, back. Now. Time left is into the fight. This could be really bad. Dichiara, they drop the black hole. They are going to bring down Chappy. Dichiara is going to fall there. Rapier on the ground. FN drops it, picks it back up. No more cheese for him. And that might have just done it. Oh, that, that was risky from FN. <laughs> Jeez, if he had went down there, then we actually could have had potential trouble. All right, and yeah, Rapier now there. The tier fours are going to fall. They don't have any more. And it looks like this is just going to about do it as, well, everything thrown out. They're controlling FN. FN. Oh, but the sheep stick from Meepo. He comes in right in time, saves the day. Everybody dead. And GG finally gets called. It looks good for a second from Vega, but Empire too strong. Yeah. Gave it the best effort with the Rapier, too. They held out. Waited for their uh, big attempt to play there, but... Yeah. Not, not quite good enough, my friend. Maybe there, if you get, like, the, the black hole onto Weaver as he time lapses back in and he wasn't able to Sakuchi away, that might have been the way to do it, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Great game, though. Uh, yeah. I, I did thoroughly enjoy that one. So, uh, Empire, impressive with the Meepo. I'm sure we'll get that band out. We'll maybe have a bit more of a uh, an even game coming in. They they were looking pretty close there from Vega. I thought maybe there were some moments, but the uh, the cheeky Rubik pulling punished. Take that. Uh, <laughs> not that the Pudge pulling was much better, and they picked a Meepo. So you know what? We'll, we'll have to see where Rubik and Lone Druid and Meepo all end up in the next draft. Yeah, well, guys, this is just game number one, Empire versus Vega Squadron. We said at the beginning, this is a matchup that could have some fireworks in it and a lot more to come soon as game number two is just around the corner. DAC 2017 CIS qualifiers. It's the upper bracket finals for the group stages of Group B. And we'll be back in just a little bit. Lyrical and Trent Pax, you two commentators, see you in a bit.